What's up, Jose? What's up, buddy? How you doing? We got a lot to talk about the Olympia. I know you were uh, home watching it. I was down there in Orlando. In yeah. Florida. Um, man, a, a good one this year. Lots of uh, lots of ways we didn't know which way it was going to go right into the the final decision. Was this your third or fourth Olympia you've been to? Second, only second. Really? First one was was 2018. Your last one. No shit. Yeah. How'd you like the the different venue? I loved it, man. Yeah. It was it was you know obviously 18 was was old ownership. This one was Jake Wood. Um, 18 was Vegas, the old Orleans setup and convention centers halfway across town and. Yeah. Um, this thing was awesome and everything was under one roof. You could get from the expo to the main hall in like three minutes. Wow. Just right around the corner. Everything was right there. Um, the production, the stage, the show um, was awesome. You know, they, they, yeah. they, they've just, you can tell it's somebody who, who cares about the sport, who also has deep pockets and isn't, yeah, yeah. they're, they're not, um, you know, trying to bring this thing in and worrying about it being profitable. I'm sure these first couple of years. Right. How many, how many seats did it hold? Do you think, man, I don't know. Um, I, I'd just be guessing. Um, 5,000. I, I, that's, that's what was coming to my mind. Yeah. Was, was 5,000. Um, for all I know, it could be 10, but I'm trying to like think of concert venues I've been to. You know, 10,000 is a lot of people. So I, I'd say five, but I'm not sure. New Orleans is, is 11,000. Okay. So how would it be? Man, this was a giant convention hall. Yeah. Went far left. I'm trying to think. I probably could have done easy math while I was there of counting the rows, but there were a lot of rows stacked side by side by all the way to the left. The stage was massive. Um, to the left and right of each stage were giant jumbotron TVs for yeah. people sit. So they they got a lot of width out of the room. It wasn't like here's the stage, here's people. They yeah. had people going row after row to the right to the left. Um, so I'd say at least five thousand. It could be closer to ten, but I don't know. Wow. My only complaint was the lights going off. As far as for the pay per view to see it. On the live stream, you couldn't see anything. Like you couldn't tell the conditioning of the athletes because the lights were flashing, and then the the strobe the stuff behind the competitors yeah. was very distracting. Yeah. So you know it was very professional, and 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 you know you can tell they put a lot into it. It was distracting. You know, bodybuilding is pretty simple. We're judging the bodies. You know, so we got to be able to see them. You know, that, that stuff was, I think they'll have to rethink that on how to do that without it becoming a hindrance, not only for the viewer, but for, for judging it. You know, I'm sure, oh, it, sure. it was distracting for everyone. If yeah. you guys could see it, you know. Uh, I, it, it was a lot, you know, it, you felt like you were in like a Vegas nightclub, you know, yeah. screens and lights and strobes. And, and so on one end, as like a spectator, it made the event feel really big, yeah. um, which was nice to somebody that likes the sport. You, you want to feel like it's a big deal. And yeah. sometimes these shows, even the biggest ones out there feel like people cut corners and they're low budget. This did it, but I, I agree. Uh, it, it became hard to just focus in on, you know, when they had three man, five man call outs and you're trying to look at the details there's just lights flashing every which way the bat, the colors are changing on you, which, you know, just messes with your eyes. So right. visually it was hard to stay focused. I felt like I had like ADHD watching the show. Yeah. You know, just lights, things pulling your attention. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, you know, maybe they, they find some compromise cause obviously uh, a lot of that was there to pay bills with all of the sponsors constantly rotating in the background. Yeah. But there's got to be some other way to do that. Right. You know, keep a black background and find other ways to, to places to put the sponsors. So it's not as dramatic as they had it. Right. So I've already given my opinion numerous times and I do all the time and I will, but since you were there, I would rather hear a combination of my thoughts and you, you can, uh, 
uh, dispel my 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 theories or confirm them. Um, you know, let's start with with the two twelve guys. Um, from from where I was sitting at home, uh, I wouldn't have had a problem with any of the top three winning, honestly, for their own reasons. You know, uh, Kamal is the most polished guy on stage. Um, you know, condition crazy, very balanced. Um, presentation is perfect. He might have been just a little smaller than the other two guys, you know, um, uh, Sean and, and, and Derek. But that said, he was he was so good and so polished and, you know, pretty much the standard of what he set for himself for the last couple of years. So, you know, I, I really wouldn't have had a problem with any one of those three guys winning. Sean was a few pounds bigger than last year. He looked maybe a, a tad rounder. You know, he is... He was the biggest guy pound for pound, you know. He was just just awesome as, as usual. Condition on point, everything looked great. Certain shots are knockout shots, you know. I think his rear double was closer this year than it was in in in, pat, in the past, you know, closer meaning closer in with Kamal in 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 Derek. You know, that was kind of a weakness in the past, but he's get he's added tissue so the shape is so crazy you know um and then of course Derek who who is just you know he, I wouldn't even say he nailed it but this is by far the best Derek we've seen you know um he can get clearly so much better he was lacking the detail through the pecs shoulders and arms but everything else his shape is superior to everyone is you know he is big he's he's plenty big and his condition was the best it's been so you know i think they made the right choice i i'm okay with it but i really would have been okay with with any of the top three um but i'm so happy for 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 uh derek because he did, that's a lot of pressure coming up right away his first olympia they were labeling him you know the the heir apparent to flex lewis which I thought was a little um, uh, um, early, but, but, you know, he had pressure right out of the gate and he's maintained and, and gotten better. And he finally fought through that. So um, how, how do you feel about, do you think one of them was a blowout? Do you think uh, Kamal was smaller noticeably? Do you think, um, um, do you think they were all at their best? And this was a really tough one. You know, I, I, I watch prejudging, which is in the expo hall that, you know, the tough thing, and you can, ex you can speak to this because you experienced it is prejudging's in the expo hall. And then you have the night show finals in, in the main hall. Yeah. It's very different lighting. Very the different. Main hall is, is blacked out throughout uh, where the audience is sitting. Obviously now you have those distracting lights behind you on the stage. The expo halls all lit up, right? You know, and so it's, you know, right at the end of the expo. So I got two different looks at these guys. But even with that being said, uh, to your point, I would have been fine with either of the three winning. It was just three drastically different physiques. Um, you know, I was texting you, Kamal just doesn't have any weaknesses. But it's almost kind of like in a show like this, it almost hurts him right. because he doesn't have a standout like freak body part you right. know you almost overlook them because you know on a front double that's Derek shot all day yeah. and your eyes just go right to that and you go kind to of waste the vacuum the rib cage and so while Kamal just doesn't have a shot like that and it's not that even that he's bad he's he looks incredible in every shot right but it's missing a little bit of that freak factor you know when you're looking at obviously Lunsford shape is, you know, one of the best out there. Um, and Sean, so much muscle on such a small frame, you know, is like a little mini Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. So there, Kamal had nothing wrong. He looked to be, honestly, I think it is all time best at 50, yeah. which is incredible. Um, I just think your eyes weren't drawn to him as much on some poses, you know, compared to Sean and Derek, but you could make an argument that he wins a lot of these shots at the same time. 
because yeah. he's so balanced. His condition is perfect, front to back, top to bottom. Um, that I overlooked him initially because, you know, Derek was who you wanted to see and you're looking at Sean and they made those comparisons. But the more that they compared him, you're like, he's got nothing wrong with him. You, you can't pick anything apart. There's, there's, you know, um, so then you start making the case of, should he win it? You know, it's really the criteria and what you're looking for. Right. Um, to your point for Derek, it was by far the best he's looked, but you still look at him and you're like, he can be so much better than this. Yeah. You know, in, in a positive way of liking the guy and, you know, yeah. Knowing, and you and I have seen him. What was he at Carbon Culture? 235, 240? Yeah, completely peeled out of his mind. Yeah. yeah. So my first thought right when Derek wa walked out at prejudging was after seeing him at, at Carbon Culture, wearing the shirt, um, is how much smaller his legs looked at this show compared to when you and I saw him. Right. Like he lost 10, 15 pounds from his legs easily. Yeah. When you and I saw him, those legs were peeled. Yeah. And they almost looked on the smaller side for his for how wide he is, right? That's always the, the tough part when you're that wide. Right. You kind of need legs that take up as much width. So that was the noticeable part. That was is by far his best. And it's almost like everybody's just been waiting for him to get within striking distance, you know, for him to win this thing. Yeah. Um, and Sean um man i don't know in terms of sean this year versus last year it, just like we'll talk about in the open i think it's 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 hard to tell if the the reigning champ the returning champ was at all off and same thing for classic or did the competition just get better and bridge the gap mm -hmm. and i think uh for classic and for 212 i think that's more of what it was mm -hmm. is i think derek certainly bridged the gap and got better I think Kamal was even slightly better um, than the last couple of years. And I think Sean was certainly bigger. Um, if I had to pick apart anything, and I, I don't know if it's just a matter of there's no other place for the muscle to go, yeah. but he his midsection just, at least in person, where I was sitting, didn't look as tight and dialed in as last year. And that's totally nitpicking, right? And, and I think it's partly because, you know, he's up a few more pounds. Um, and depending on how they carved up to, to fill him up, that was it. So I, I don't know. Sean looked great. I don't know if he was much noticeably better than last year. But he was, I would say, at the very least, about the same, which was good enough to win last year and yeah. the best physique in the world. Yeah. Um, Derek was better. So that and noticeably better. And Kamal was, we'll say about the same. I think he was a little better, but, you know, sort of in the, in the same vein as Sean. Yeah. You're nitpicking of, you know, they're already so good and so consistent year after year that your Derek kind of had the gift of being off for four <laughs> years in a row or three years yeah. in a row, whatever it was, right? That he. It made a difference. Yeah. It was a drastic improvement and they rewarded him for it. So that, yeah. that makes perfect sense. Um, one thing I'll add to this, you know, uh, uh, I won't disclose everything, but, you know, I was telling you, so I watched prejudging um, standing side by side with Justin Miller. And obviously, you know, uh, we don't want to, um, you know, bring this down too much, but obviously you can't mention 212 without mentioning George. Um, you know, this has been talked about a lot, but uh, what I can tell you, Justin was very open with me. You know, there's, where I feel terrible for Justin, there's been a lot of speculation as to yeah. why George passed away and a lot of finger pointing um, as, you know, because of the Shelby Starnes thing and the stuff that's gone on with other coaches, yeah. a lot of finger pointing, Justin, you know, of assumptions of he must have been doing this or that, and that's what did it. Um, standing with Justin, he told me everything George was on. And I, I have no reason to believe he would lie about anything. Yeah. And as I told you, he said they hadn't even started diuretics. Um, George was, I believe, at six or seven days out, 213. And the night before he passed away, he was 207. So a lot of everyone's speculation was uh, that 
he had to aggressively try to make weight. Right. And we're all thinking he's 220, 225, trying to cut down to make 212. And, and you're having to take a whole bunch of diuretics in order to get there. Um, according to Justin, that wasn't the case at all. Um, and, and, you know, they have a ton of video, obviously, Ricky, the New England muscle guy, um, was there living with him, you know, videotaping the whole thing. They, they were very under wraps, this prep for George, like there were really no picks um, coming out. It wasn't, here's George two weeks out, one week out. He, his plan was to weigh in covered up. That's how much he, he believed he had made improvements and wanted to walk out on stage and have a wow moment versus a, you know, post really crazy photos and maybe not live up to the hype of those Instagram photos. Right. So his plan was to weigh in at 212 with a tracksuit on and have nobody see him until he's backstage pumping up. And so Justin showed me videos and posing stuff of uh, George seven days out, five days out. And he, he showed would... clips of that during that um, uh, memorial they did yes. there. Um, that was pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of it. So they gave they gave Ricky of New England, uh, New England media, New England muscle media. Yeah, New England muscle media. 90 seconds, you know, the, the day after George passed, two days after they said, you know, we're going to do a little memoriam. You have 90 seconds to put together a thing for George. So thank God they did it. But, uh, you know, what, what do you do for that? So they put some of those clips in and you could see there was a, you know, a, a hands class, most muscular yeah, where George was looking crazy. Yeah. Um, so I have no doubt, you know, obviously Justin was, was very emotional while we were there and he was like, George would have won this. Um, George absolutely would have been in that. He would have squeaked in the top three. Yeah, I have no doubt. Uh, but yeah, just for, for, you know, one of the things Justin told me is he was willing to go on any podcast and openly talk about the whole thing. You know, uh, uh, one, because I think blame was probably wrongly put on him. Assumptions were made. Yeah. And two, so obviously everybody can learn. So you know, in lieu of, it doesn't feel right to ask him to come on here and talk about this stuff. Yeah. I figured I'd at least pass that along, you know, uh, uh, having, I've met Justin multiple times and, and I felt he was being honest about what George was taking and wasn't taking yeah. and no diuretics were being used. He was drinking two gallons of water a day. They were just starting their carb up, um, on that night. He had a baked potato and a stack of pancakes and, um, they hadn't heard from him the next morning with some text asking, you know, how he was doing and went to the room around noon and they suspect, you know, he passed away around like 6 a.m. or so, um, found his body. So, um, you know, it'll be an autopsy thing. You'd have to assume some sort of heart failure or stroke or aneurysm or something along those lines. Well, I, I spoke to Justin's wife and one of George's really close friends and what they I found interesting, they said George's father had passed away at 37 years old wow. from, a, from a brain aneurysm. Wow. OK, I didn't know that. And and um, and I had heard that I don't know if Justin said it, but that there was blood coming from his nose. Um, and, you know, you would think a, a basic heart attack wouldn't do that or Correct. maybe it does but a brain bleed would. Um, so that would be completely bananas if, if George passed away the same way his dad did in the same year, like, like yeah. same age, you know, that's yeah. um, pretty wild. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it, it, the stuff is gonna be talk, talked about, you know, so it's, it's best that you try to get it out in the most positive way possible and you like to think that George is a pretty bright guy. You know, I don't think he would do anything overly extreme to put himself uh, in, in, in danger. You know, it was, if he did, it was certainly um, an accident uh, or, or a combination of pre-existing issues that he didn't know anything about. Um, so that, that sucks any way you slice it. But uh, back to the show, was there anyone that stuck out to you in the two twelves that, that either didn't get a fair shake that you think or or that improved or or, or or didn't? Man, I'm trying to think, you know, there were 
obviously Keon was, you know, uh, uh, I'll just call it a flop, you know, uh, of big expectations, people sort of looking at him for that fourth or fifth place spot. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what happened there, but, you know, noticeably not, not in shape. So you can't say much more about that. You don't want to beat the guy while he's down, but that, you know, was, was uh, a big standout, you know, uh, I think he was like fourth call out, you know, yeah. and no one would assume that. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other guys. Um, there's Ashkenani. He sort of just was forgettable. And, and I don't even know why it just came out. And, you know, his legs were, were like weird. Um, there was no separation of his yeah. legs. It was, you know, it just wasn't a great version of him. But I mean, he's still huge. Still had the huge lats and uh, craziness. Um, someone that's worth mentioning, who's in your wheelhouse, is uh, is Nathan Epler. You know that ought to make you feel good. That not only does he do well in the pros, but he plays fifth in the world. You know, and he's about your height in a similar type of physique. You know that that's that's very motivating, or it should be, to know that they're going to judge on the overall package not just who's the shortest biggest thickest craziest looking guy but if you have a, a nice aesthetically pleasing physique and you bring it in condition and you're very complete you're gonna you're gonna get him rewarded you, you know and uh good for him because you know he's certainly not the biggest guy but he flows really well, and and I'm sure he looked crazy in person. Yeah, it was that was. I'm glad you brought that up. I was trying to think of some of the other, uh, you know, the the two twelve was such a three man show at the end that yeah. that's where my mind went to. But uh, absolutely, I was texting you and saying like, this is unbelievable. You know, this guy in his first Olympia gets fifth place. Um, he was so out muscled up there, like it, it was. And I say this just from like glancing across the stage it looks like a light heavyweight up there just as in standing and a couple shots, right? Like given all these other guys that are five, four, five, five, yeah. right at the weight limit. Um, he looked very thin, but when you start comparing them in the poses, while he's not, you know, just stacked front to back and just a, a, a ball of muscle, every pose looks great. Right. So, you know, he's, he's thin, you know, when, when everybody's just up there in the front relaxed, you can pick them out immediately saying like, what's this guy doing here? Yeah. But with a trained eye, when you start going pose by pose, like the front lat spread, you know, which he just dominates on. Yeah. Um, while glancing across the stage, he just looks thin. If you judge the pose, how you're supposed to judge the pose, he wins that pose. Right. Yeah. So, so he's got great I, packs in that. He's real squared yeah. off. His waist is tiny. His legs are nice and separated. Condition's great. Just an overall great look. So, yeah, that's awesome to see. And that's kind of what I see you as next year, you know, because um, you're, you're, you've got to be right at the same height, 5'8". I, you know, I, I went up to – I saw Matt Kuba, and I just went up to shake his hand and, you know, say congrats on your guy. And I didn't realize – um Nathan Epler was standing right next to him at first and you know, shook his hand and said hey, I'm a fan because he was just all track suited up you know? yeah yeah this and like it, a men's physique guy standing. wasn't big you know yeah, it's just yeah. a guy standing there in a, in, a, in a track suit and um you know I just assumed he was like a classic physique guy or something around and I looked over and I was like oh shit you know congratulations man you know I'm a big fan I should have I should have hided myself next to him to see how how close we are I didn't pay too close attention you're definitely close we have to be about the same yeah yeah. So another guy I really loved who, who didn't get the love was uh, Kareth Bajo. Yeah. He looked awesome. He looked awesome in the lineup in the quarter turns. I don't know if the pictures I saw on, you know, Instagram were highlighted or something, but he looked unbelievable. Like, like in the, in the pictures, even on the live stream, he looked great. I thought yep. he should have been compared favorably. I would have had him ahead of, Ashkenani, I would have had him in that same area with Epler and um, Angel Calderon. You know, a Angel's huge, but, but like he's a bit—I don't know—it's weird, a little top-heavy. You know, yes. 
yep. with the big heavy pecs and the real wide shoulders. Yep. His legs still haven't caught up. Uh, I think he tried to catch them up and come in heavier, which amounted to kind of a bigger midsection. And, and uh, you know, I like Kareth's look a little better than than, um, than than Angel and Ashkenani. So I honestly would have had Kareth in the four or five spot, you know, him and Epler in that area rather than uh, Angel and then Ashkenani was sixth. So uh, Kareth, I believe, was eighth. I think you're right yeah yeah that and that was the letdown he looked me. great you couldn't you couldn't say anything bad about him and you know I, I don't know if it was just a matter of i mean ashkenani who knows why they place him where they place him so i don't i don't even know about that but the with angel there's such a freak factor like it's not a pretty physique yeah. his front relaxed he's even coming down on it you know to get the pecs to to pop yeah. and uh you know you they're striated chest muscles in every pose that he does right that it somehow your eyes are drawn to that you yeah. know and, and so i think it's almost one of those things where like we talked about with um in, in for the top three guys of you know derek has some freak poses clarita has some freak poses and uh uh, uh what's his name uh third place um Kamal. Kamal doesn't really like yeah. everything just flows perfectly i feel like Kareth is kind of like that yeah everything's you know he was in good condition everything flows perfectly and i think he's a better bodybuilder than ashkenani or or uh angel but your eyes were drawn to angel you know yeah. every shot just for the the freakiness of his chest and upper body yeah i got a couple other questions how did um elward donny end up so lost like in the shuffle we're done. He's the Egyptian, the kid yeah. with the tiny waist. And yep. the, what happened? Was he not in condition? It looked great to me. I, I have no idea that there were the two twelve was tough because, uh, unlike classic and open, you know, there was sort of a you could see the decline, you know, as as the callouts went, you know, just yeah. in the, the the level of of these guys, and in two twelve. You just had so many different looking physiques, certainly with the top three, and then Epler in there in the top five, which is, you know, different looking than that, that I feel like some of these other guys looked incredible. Kareth being one, Odani being another one, where there was nothing wrong with them. I just think, I don't know if the judging got tired and they're just, you know, yeah. they, they put that attention to that first group and then they're like, all right, everyone else, let's just put them somewhere. I don't know. I, I think if, if you're up there at the Olympia and you're not extraordinary in one way or another, like you said, you know, uh, um, Calderon is extraordinary in his width and crazy pecs, you know. Uh, um, Epler is extraordinary in his condition and the way he's put together. Um, Ashkenani has the extraordinary taper and lats and where the, these other guys start to, um, um, you know, Bajo's very complete, very, very balanced, but nothing jumping out at you right away. Same as Wadani. Um, so that's unfortunate. I would like to see them. Um, let's move on to the open guys. Yep. Um, again, I, I could have flip-flopped the, the top. That wasn't the best version of Rami. I think he was better last year. I think he was posing a little weird. Um, he was hitting his front lat spread and it would look good, and then he crunched down in his abs. Yeah, and yep, like the Nick no Walker thing. Um, yeah. he it seemed like his torso was a little flat, like, like uh, or washed out the abs, even from the chin to the belly button. Just his pecs weren't striated, his abs weren't super dry, and that stands out when you're standing next to Brandon Curry next to hottie and, and next to you know even nick walker who, whose torso is very well put together um he had the striated glutes you know he was hard in the glutes but he didn't have striated quads he didn't have really separation in his quads his shoulders looked a little funky that you know people sean ray was talking about um uh, hottie's shoulders but but rami's looked like football pads he was standing there, and it was like, whoop, and it looked a little questionable. Um, so if this were the year, I, I would have, 
you know, I would have had no problem with, with Brandon beating him. I, I definitely wouldn't have had a problem with Hottie beating him. You know, by all the, um, all, all, all the, what are the words? Of the standards of bodybuilding, of what you're judging, um, Hottie ticks all the boxes. He's muscular, he's shredded, he's complete, he's balanced. He did, had a great presentation. Um, you know, I'm a little guy, so maybe I'm biased towards a little guy, um, but he's not small. He is Jack. He had, he won more poses than anyone else in my mind. You know, he wins a front lat spread. He wins a rear lat spread. He wins an ab and thigh. He wins the most muscular. Um, he, he was pretty nasty to me. Um, I just don't, when there's a guy the size around me and he's in decent condition, it's hard to not let him win, you know, um, especially after he was the standard of last year. Um, that was an unbelievable version of Brandon. He was um, everything you would want. Could he have been a percent drier? Sure. But the size kind of outweighed any bit of condition he was missing, you know. He was huge. He, he won the side poses against Rami. You know, maybe not the side chest because Rami got that leg, but the side tricep for sure. Yep. Because the abs were popping, the shoulders, pecs. Um, yeah, Brandon is awesome. Um, I, I I slept on him in my predictions. I I had him more down in the three four spot because uh, I was convinced it was going to be Rami and Hadi and the Nick Walker. Um, and, and, and tell me about that. How come? Nick wasn't was, was was Hunter better than Nick was was um I would have had Nick just like they had Rami and Brandon their own call out I would have had Hadi and Nick with their own call out and yeah. and, and uh, Hadi Nick and Hunter with their own call out and and did they do that one no i i don't believe i could be wrong but i don't think those guys ever stood next to each other because that was a comparison i wanted to see yeah. and they kept those guys on the outside of those yeah. comparisons i don't know that they ever put them right near each other to to do a direct comparison um yeah the the hunter hunter nick hottie thing um hunter was bigger sort of in that Steve Kuklo kind of, you know, just massive frame. frame. Yeah. Yep. Um, Hunter flows a lot better. He's not missing any body parts, you know, and he's not a, just a collection of large, large body parts thrown together. Everything flows really well. Yeah. In person, he didn't look nearly conditioned enough. I've yeah, seen photos he did, he where did. he looked a lot more shredded than what I saw. Um, you know, so you just never know how the lighting is. Um, it could be that he was that shredded and Nick Walker was just on a whole other stratosphere that made him look, you know, uh, uh, not quite ready. But um, I, I think I, I'd be curious to get your opinion, too. Like when I look at at Hunter, he's not missing any body parts. Is it just that he needs like compared to someone like Nick deeper abs? Because it's the midsection that always looks very washed out for me. Well, he, he's a lot like Lunsford in the fact that He's young and the maturity hasn't hit his physique yet. Yeah. So there's not a lot of detail going around. There's beautiful shape. There's plenty of muscle, but there's not a lot of maturity of hard, grainy muscle. You know, his legs are big. His calves are big. His shoulders are huge. His arms are huge. Um, his back has improved, but there's just not a lot popping out, you know, um, I don't know. I think they put a rush on that one. I think, uh, you know, he, clearly he's good and his shape is great. I just think uh, sometimes they do that, you know. Like he's year, the Lunsford of this year. Where yeah, they, yeah. You know, they're, they're setting, it looks like they're setting them up because that's everybody's talking, you know, like that's been the talk of the uh, some of these other podcasts is Hunter's going to win the Olympia. It's just a matter of a couple of years, you know, like they positioned well, him to be that way. They're certainly putting him in the good spot to do so. Um, I would have had, honestly, I would have had Justin ahead of him. Justin's condition looked great. His rear double's nuts. His front double. Um, 
he looked great to me. Am I wrong? Was was this? No, the Justin best looked great. The only the only knock on the guy is um, sometimes his stomach just looks really thick. He needs to just yeah. control it a little better. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, he's able to pull it in and to get everything to look good in that freeze frame picture. Yeah. There's just a little bit of the transitions when I think of Justin after seeing him at the show, I think of kind of a bigger distended stomach. So yeah. I think it's a little bit of the in betweens. It sticks with you, but when he hits a pose, he's deadly. Every yeah. shot. Um, yeah, and for Nick, Nick looked incredible. You know, I, I had Nick ahead. And, and one of the, the confusing things, if you watch pre-judging and then watch finals, was um, after pre-judging, it looked like Hadi was going to be fifth or sixth. Yeah. The way they had the call-out set up, right? Of like the second call-out or first call-out, but on the outside, and they did another call-out, and he's still on the outside with, it was like Nick and Hunter in the middle, I think something like that. Yeah. And it looked to be Nick was getting third at that point. And Hadi might even be behind Hunter. Um, and so everybody was kind of dumbfounded, like, wow, they're really pushing Hadi out. And then when final starts, first call out, three man call out, Hadi, uh, Brandon, and Rami. Yeah. And so everyone was kind of shocked. It's like, oh, Hadi is in the mix. You never would have known that from prejudging. Yeah. Well, maybe, you know, sometimes he the, he i mean steve the, the head judge knows what he's looking at he's a better judge than anyone so he may not have to waste time and put hottie over there he's like i know this guy's gonna be at least third so let me see what uh nick and hunter look like over here and um you know bonac apparently they what was going on with him was bonac smaller what was, was so the, the thing that just stood out was his midsection just looked a lot thicker and I don't, I'm assuming it was, so I don't know if it was a condition thing or a spillover thing, but when he came out, he was so thick around the midsection. And again, it could be to your point when you were telling me when your legs started to downsize, Yeah, it makes the midsection look bigger. So visually without knowing what was going on, his midsection looked a lot thicker. Again, so it could be the legs of downsize and that's why. Yeah. I think it is. I think that plays a role um, because his legs are smaller. His legs used to be visibly gigantic and um, they're, they're noticeably smaller. Um, maybe through the shoulders, he looked a little smaller, but his condition was great. Yep. You know, for some reason, he couldn't, they, his abs weren't tight. Like when he hit that shot, it wasn't shredded, you know, yep. like potties. Yeah. Um, so that that's the only downfall I can speak of, but I guess that's a big one, you know. The, the, um, it, to me, it threw off his look. You know, I, I've been yeah. a fan of of Bonax for a while, and it just looked like he had a distended midsection. And to your point as well, any of these shots where he went to show abs, it just wasn't tight and dry, and the detail wasn't there. It was still right. kind of distended and smoothed over. So I don't know if that was a conditioning thing, if they overcarbed and it just distended his stomach, but it threw off when, when they were doing the individuals in prejudging, everybody's coming out, you know, there were some standouts, certainly hottie. Nick Walker was a big standout because you're like, okay, he brought the conditioning again. Yeah. Um, when Bonnet came out, I immediately was like, oh, he's off. He's not going to be in that mix for top three, top four. Right. Just, just him walking out. And as you started doing comparisons, um, there was just something due to the midsection that just wasn't pleasing about it, where a lot of other guys were able to push ahead of him. What did he end up placing? Was he sixth? Sixth, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sixth, and then Ian was seventh again. Yep. Um, who was eighth? Was it Justin? Yes, Justin eighth. Yeah. Like Akeem ninth. Think yeah. When we were there, I didn't. They obviously just did what top top five, top six for yeah. the awards. Yeah. Um, so it was only after I saw. Um, yeah, Keem is interesting because he's not way off, but it certainly isn't his best. Right. And he's guys that he's beaten before are beating him now. Ian being one of them. Yeah. Guys Justin. that shouldn't beat him. Right. You know he's bigger than everyone. He's well put together. He just needs to bring it, and he hasn't been. And, and there's nothing else to say about that. He, he's 
if he's his best, he's in that first call out, you know, because he, he's got everything, but he's he's not, and, and there's something missing. So here's here's a kind of a general question for you, because I somebody asked me a couple of days ago looking at various divisions and wellness, whatever category, and they could pinpoint the people, the uh, you know, like in in 212, the keons. There, there's a, there's keons in each group where you're like, wow, like they just didn't bring the condition. Uh, in your experience of having, you know, you've always been in condition, but you've, I'm sure you've been around athletes that had some big flops at big shows. Is, is that, uh, literally just a matter of like, they had probably a lot of personal stuff going on and they just didn't do what they needed to do. Is it always as simple as that? It's going to be different per case, but yeah, I would assume there's an emotional concept uh, 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 involved here. There, there's something that's stopping them from getting up in the morning and doing fasted cardio, but getting all their meals in or, 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 you know, training the way they should be. If you go half ass, it's going to show on stage. And, you know, I mean, um, people emotionally are different uh, and, and are very delicate, you know? So, you know, last year, Keon pulled out of the Olympia because of emotional issues. Yep. Um, this year, he probably should have pulled out. Um, uh, he's, he did post something about having digestion issues. and But, I mean, digestion issues a week or two out isn't going to cause the way he looked. Right. You know, that was from a month of do doing the wrong things. Right. Uh, you know, so, you know, there's, there's various reasons as to why people aren't in shape. But it seldomly is going to be just because of a few days of messing up or he missed his carb load. Like, no way. When I was in condition, like real condition, I could have eaten McDonald's the whole last 48 hours and still come in shredded. It, yep. it, it wouldn't have. Uh, it's not that it, it the, the real condition happens from months ago, not not that last couple hours. Um, so it's it's really hard to say. I, I think um, from what I've heard, people, um, you know, some of these people don't want to to push. They would rather um, take something to do the work rather than do an extra cardio or eating extra clean. You know, whenever you have your coach and someone and they ask you, can I just take a, a, an extra clean instead of doing that? Like, I'm like, are you serious? You're joking, right? Like, do I have to really do cardio? Like, it's it's a complete it's a mindset that I don't understand. I where I would rather do an extra hour of cardio, so I know in my own mind I did more than what was asked of me. I I did everything possible at my disposal to 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 be my best, rather than oh I was lazy and I would rather just do this. Yep. So there's so many different reasons why people come off. Um, and, and I would be a fool to try and guess why so-and-so was off. Um, but I, I just know there are someone like, I can guess like James, because James was shredded. Yeah. He was in shape. He was just flat as hell. He was just small. Like, like yeah. he looked as though he might have been shredded a week ago. And he just went too far because he had like his back double had a lot of detail, a lot of, but he was just flat. He looked small. Um, and James is not small. Right. So, you know, the, you can tell when it's a case like that. Yeah. But when they're, they look like a jelly donut all around, you know, no detail, then that's, that's weird. You know? Um, so James looked like he just overdid it. You know, that's a big dude. And he looked a little thin or something. Oh, for sure. did. That was, you know, you know, I like James a lot. You want to knock him and, and, you know, he and his coach, I'm sure will figure this out. And I, they talked about maybe doing, doing a, a show after the Olympia, you know, end on a, on a high note, but yeah, when he came out, it was very underwhelming, you know, and um, if we hadn't had, you know, James has had some tough showings uh, in the past. I think he yeah. He did the Olympia, what, uh, was it 18, 19, something like that? Um, and, you know, didn't quite nail it. But then when he 
he won a couple pro shows. He looked phenomenal at those shows. Yeah. And and this was not that look. It, it, no. He he looks so undersized and he's not. He's a big guy. But yeah, that's that's a good point of that's an example of and certainly you see even locally competitors that diet too far and there's a point of no return that you can't carve up from in two or three days, you know. Right. Um I feel for those guys, you know, it, it's there, there is no coming back, no matter the burgers and fries and pancakes and whatever it is you try to eat. Right. They tried too hard. Yeah. They were too disciplined. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That, right. One of those, yeah, too hardcore. Yep. I was guilty of that. And I always said that I'm like, Chris, the, the greatest thing that I got from Chris was that he would save me from myself. Cause I, you know, I, I was just of the, the mindset that if I do two hours on the step mill every day, I'm going to be peeled. There's no two ways about it. And then, you know, I got to a point where like, now I have to not only put on muscle, I would not only save myself from losing muscle during prep, but try to put on muscle to move up to 212. You know, 202, I could be the biggest, hardest guy at 212. Now I have 10 more pounds to try to compete with these guys. And that's where he'd back everything back just to just walk lightly on the treadmill. You can do 45 minutes on the step mill, but we're going to feed the hell out of you. You know, so I ate a ton where in the past I would have been totally afraid to eat that much food, you know, and I never weighed anything. I used to just like eyeball it. And when I started weighing 10 ounces of protein cooked, it was like, it took me 40 minutes to eat a meal, (laughs) you know? Yeah. And, and it worked and I, and I grew, I put on eight to 10 pounds of muscle in, in a couple of short years, you know? Um, so yeah, the, these guys, um, I, I, I feel bad for, for James because I know how hot he works. Um, I was happy to see Justin look that way. What about Ian? Was he, Ian looked maybe a smidge flat himself. Like, I think that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. He looked great. Um, but you know, looking, I'm comparing the photos of some of these past shows that he's he's done. Uh, Arnold being one, um, he was just a little off that. You know, when you're you're always judged against your best, and I don't think this was his best, but it was just a little off. Yeah. You know, versus James was a lot off, and you really feel right. for the guy because you said he he might have worked too hard and pushed right. things too far. Um, you know, versus the the other side of things, the Keons where you know, there was, you know, obviously there's mental health and things going on, but there were a lot of cardio sessions missed in that prep. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Uh, uh, Classic. uh, I guess it's worth touching on that. And the only thing I'll say for that, as I was saying earlier is I think Chris was um, at least as good as last year, last year was dominating, right? He came out and you're like, done. He wins. Now it's second and third this year. He might've had a little bit more muscle on him. Um, but he wasn't dominating. And, and I initially was questioning like his, his condition off because he's not running away with this. Yeah. Uh, but I think it had more to do with Breon was at his all time best. And I think Terrence was probably at his all time best. That's what and I was about so they to bridged say. the gap. So it, it, it somehow made Bumstead look less impressive. Like we were expecting everybody, like he's going to run away with this. He was so far ahead of everyone else last year. And everyone's saying now this is the look, you know, Breon isn't the look anymore. Bumstead's the look, Um, but it was a lot closer and you really could have made, you know, when they were announcing the finals, uh, I I was sitting next to uh, Sean Clarita, which was, you know, another cool story for another time. You know, the the prejudgings, I was sitting next to Sean's wife. So man, I could feel the tension on her made, made the show more exciting for me. And then as soon as Sean got off stage, he had his little suitcase and came, sat down right next to me. Why is it going to be a little suitcase? <laughs> it was, it was like I knew you were going to go there. He it had his little suitcase <laughs> with his little shoes on. What the fuck's wrong with you? A little bow tie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was picking his brain and he had Terrence winning, you know, right down the end. I leaned over and I said, who do you got? And he's like, I have Terrence winning this. So you could make arguments, you know, it was sort of like the 212. Um uh, of based on what you're looking at terrence didn't have any flaws um in person bumstead's towering over everybody yeah you know, and width and height so terrence and terrence is a small guy in person you know, and i feel like in pictures 
he almost looks bigger in pictures to me because you can see all that detail. In right. person, sometimes the detail doesn't come through and you're just left with Chris towering over everybody. Yeah. Well, Chris has something that Terrence and Breon can't train in the off season. And it was something similar to what Flex Lewis had. And that is the aura he brings to the stage. You know, when he comes out, he is the champ. He is the multiple champ in a row, the reigning champ, the number one most popular bodybuilder in the world right now, over Rami, over Hadi, over anyone. Um, Chris is it. it. So it's hard to beat that, the, the aura of, of, and you, so, so that's a case where not only do you got to beat them, but you got to knock them out. It's got to be ugly. It's got to be a bloodbath. And, and it wasn't that no. I, I agree. Chris's weakest pose, to be honest, is a rear double bicep. So when you have two guys on either side of you, or even three guys, cause four guys, cause, cause uh, Ruffin and Beyond rear double is awesome. Yep. Then you add in that kid Ramon, uh, the new Brazilian. Yep. You add in uh, Cambronero. That's all a strength for them. Yep. So for Chris, if it wasn't for his structure, that wouldn't be that great a pose. It's it's really not his strongest. It's when you turn to the front, hit a front double. He's got that Lunsford vacuum rib cage lats. Um, he's towering over everyone. His legs are tremendous. Um, his side chest is untouchable. Um, so he has some knockout shots that are light years ahead of everyone else. And that's why it's impossible to beat him when you add in the fact that he's also got this aura with him. It's that was being there. You could feel that, exactly. you know, not only just looking at him, but everybody in that place was cheering for him, Yeah, you know, other than like, Ruffin's girlfriend, you know, like, or, you know, a couple of people that were, you know, clearly there um, with that person. Was she there? Ruffin's girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah. She was sitting right in front of me. Where, where was she sitting? On, on people's laps. <laughs> <laughs> Not on an actual seat. She was, she didn't have seats there. She came and sat on laps and oh, uh, blocked where, everybody's get view. Her tickets? I don't know. I don't know what, but yeah, she was, she was blocking my view for a while, standing up, recording <laughs> his, uh, no. <laughs> right. I at least recognized who she was and why she was there. So you, you let her slide a little bit. All right. All right. But uh, no, there was everybody there, you know, it, it, like I've always liked him. And then I, I'm assuming you saw his, his speech after he won. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, you know, and obviously the mention of George in there, you know, it's a certain kind of person who you win something as big as this and you don't make it about yourself. You know, like the instinct is to say, let me tell you how hard I worked for this. And, you know, because I'm sure he worked his ass off for it. Yeah. But he took that time to say, you know, uh, shout out to my other competitors that made this interesting. And if I, and obviously the George speech, you know, um, I had so much respect for him after that. How can you not want to root, the, root for the guy to win the next five years? Well, that's why I compared him to Flex Lewis, because he's the consummate professional at all times in public everything is well thought out it's a well calculated uh um thing speech every word he says every move he makes is well calculated so so that's why he, you're not going to see him slip up and say something wrong or do something stupid on social media um chris is where he's at for a reason and uh i don't see him going anywhere for a long time because he is young and he is good and he's constantly improving. He has room to improve. And, you know, his, that aura I spoke of is, is just getting started. It's going to grow and get bigger and bigger. So uh, I would hate to be a, a classic competitor. Well, and, and kind of ask you this with, you know, before you got to go, uh, what do you do if you're Breon? Do you, do you try to make the run over to 212? Because you've got some 212 guys that came down, Breon being one. Mm -hmm. uh uh what's it was alex a 212 guy as well yeah yeah right so they came down they were smaller guys at some point do you say i'm not going to win this thing you know let me let me try obviously it was what what george had to do well there's a difference george was 34 35 when he did that yeah Rion's 41 42 
it's not a bright move to start trying to pack on massive amounts of muscle at that age. Um, so no, I mean, he's still top three in the world, right. solidified, um, and he can win other shows. He can guest pose. He can promote himself the way he is and, and make a business about it. If he goes to 212, he's going to get lost mm. in the shuffle. He wouldn't, you know, you think he could beat Wardani? No. No, no. no. And, That's and what Wardani I was going to ask you is, you know, I uh, sitting next to Clarita, we're talking like 15 minutes after he lost. He, he came down to sit next to his wife. And I leaned in and just, you know, said a couple words, um, told him you said hi. And it was like I was at a funeral. <laughs> like yeah. you, you could see, I mean, he was glazed over. Yeah. Um, and I could feel it. Like it sucked all of the energy out, you know, just yeah. feeling for this guy. And I was thinking about that of, you know, there's, there's certainly two ways to look at it. There's the competitor that you have to train to win yeah. and you want to win. And when you don't win, you're pissed, you know. We already and he, went and uh, trained legs yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. Yep. Yeah. So and, that, that um, just tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. And then there's the other guy where, you know, it was like, for instance, like we were talking, I was talking to um Kaike, you know, Carlos Men's Physique. Um, this was like two months ago. And at that point, he was like 245, 250. He was on his way cutting down. And he was sort of like, you know, if I'm not gonna make the top five here, I might have to think about moving up to classic physique. Because well, I'm that's stuck. a different story because he's very young. Yeah, yeah. And his body is exploding and he wants to, his body wants to grow. Yep. And that might be a good idea. You know, some people enjoy training their whole body, trying to grow. Some people enjoy the posing aspect of it. And he has a bright future and whatever he decides, you know, I'd almost like to see him do classic because he is tall, like like a bumstead, you know, yeah. super wide shoulders, great midsection, and he does have good legs. Yep. You know, so, um, uh, yeah, he's a case where you could. But, I, yeah, I, I would advise um, Breon to stay right where he is. He's, yeah. he's doing awesome. You know, you're top three in the world. There's thousands of guys out there dreaming they could be top three in the I world. I know. That's what I was thinking of. There's certainly a lot of positives, you know, where, where – top two top three and obviously you can speak on this you know you were always in that top five um and i'm sure it stung you know getting off the stage when things were announced but there's a lot of positives you can take from it you know if if you have the right head on your shoulders of uh certainly brion's stock went up because he was in the mix this year oh yeah i think i had written him off you know i i was assuming he might have even fallen back a couple places and you could make a case for him winning and certainly make a case for him placing second. So his stock is up this year, um, you know, so he can keep pumping out YouTube videos and, and find ways to monetize this stuff. I agree with you there. But I was thinking about that of, you know, sitting next to Clarita right after he lost, Kaike, all these guys that are where I would love to be, right, where a lot of people would aspire to be. Yeah. And they they have to keep leveling up. You know, the goal is I need to, if you're Kaike, you want to be, top three you want to win if you're Sean you got to win um and when you don't get that and it feels like you might not have a chance to win that competitor in you needs to find some other spot right where you can you might have a chance to win you yeah. switch divisions there well guys like him uh, they lost the battle but they're winning the war yeah you know they're they're both highly sought after social media personalities um you know, they're both doing well with sponsorships and, and they're doing great. And, and they both have many years to go. I've already said, I, I, I think um, Lunsford will move on. He should. I believe he should. If he wants to improve, I think he should move on. You won an Olympia, go into the Open. Sean will win another one or another couple of them. Um, I think, I think Sean... Um, Lunsford is that good. I think he can go in and be in the first call out next year right away. Boom. Yep. Right away. So uh if I were him, that's what I would do. And um and and Sean will, will win another one. They, they have bright future. Sean is still young, 37 years old. 
I had done, uh, I was on my third Olympia at 37 years old. So I did seven more. So he could come back and win seven more Olympians. Yep. You know what I mean? That That's yep. how, uh, how much time he's got. It that was the, you know, the second night, first, certainly the first night with Sean, he was uh, pretty emotional, understandably so. The second night, you know, he's, he's out there with his bow tie. He's got his medal, literally wearing the medal out there, yeah. uh, walking around. And I was able to talk to him a lot more. And, uh, you know, we talked about, does Lunsford come back? Does he not? You know, for both of us as fans, we want Lunsford to move up to the open because yeah. I don't know how much better he can be trying to. Uh, so Sean told me he weighed in at 211.5. Yeah. Um, certainly with muscle maturity, he can bring in more detail over the years. Yeah. But it still to me looks, especially having seen him in person with you at, yeah. you know, whatever that was, 235, 240. We know what he can look like, you know, yeah. how crazy he looked at that weight. The first thing I said to you was, there's no way he's making 212. <laughs> Not you looking know? like that. No. So, uh, as Sean was even saying, like, as a fan, you know, uh, uh, he's like, certainly as a competitor, it'd be nice if he moves up. But as, as a fan, I want to see the best Derek Lunsford, and that's in the open. And he's like, either way, I'm going to be training, you know, starting tomorrow. To beat him. Like, to beat him. Like, he's coming yeah. back next year. So, that was Sean's mindset. Yeah. Yeah, that was exciting. I, I think you'll see him come back and win. Um, even if Lunsford comes back, there's no guarantee he's going to come back better. Yep. You know, where Sean can come back better. And this was so close. Lunsford didn't run away with this. This was a flip right. of coin. You know, when they had the two guys in the middle and they're announcing, my my gut told me they would go with Lunsford. You yeah. know, if you go with that, uh, you know, next in line theory. Right. We're waiting for him to come in shape. So, you know, if I was a betting man, I would have bet Lunsford. But my eyes were telling me, you know, I almost, do you give this to the returning champ? There's Clarita looked great. He looked just as good as last year. Um, he won a lot of the poses, you know, it was, it was that close. So uh, if Clarita can find a way to improve, I mean, he was telling me, you know, to his point, he was like, Derek weighed in at 211.5, right? Like he can, he can maybe gain a couple pounds and find a way to come in more conditioned. Yeah. Ron was like, I'm 30 pounds below the limit, yeah. you know, 30 pounds below the limit. Um, I think he was 182. He told me, Yeah. you know, obviously he's not going to put that on. It would ruin, no. his but if he comes in three or four pounds in the right place and, and is able to keep that midsection tight, it's going to be hard to beat. That's all he's got to do. Yep. That's it. So, um, yeah, that was it. There was, there was, um, any other notables in the classic physique? Were, uh, there was the blonde kid from Germany, Urs. Yeah, he was awesome. Out of nowhere. How was that, how was that posing routine? Oh, was that Dude. the one where he was like hip hop dancing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, did the worm on the stage. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he came out of nowhere to, to, to make, what was he, uh, fourth place? Th fourth place, right? Yeah. Um, to get fourth being a relative unknown and beat Cambronero and, um, he looked great. And then Aceto's guy, the Brazilian kid, is also an unknown. Um, in fifth was unbelievable. I mean, they, those two guys beat out a lot of veterans. You know, the Cameron Arrow looked great. Yeah. Um, and so those two were definitely, and, and you know, you were telling me uh, Aceto's guy, the Brazilian, got in like what, the, the day before, the night before? Yeah. His flight was delayed coming from Brazil. They had to weigh him in as soon as he got in which was like a day after weigh-ins and uh, he still made weight. He didn't, he doesn't speak English and he didn't have any money with him. Chris was on the phone with him, like go buy a cookie at the airport so you can have something. And he's like, I have no money. Oh shit. Like, what? It's like 25 year old kid. Second time he was on a plane in his life. The first time was a couple of months ago when he went to Portugal so he he's he doesn't yeah it's amazing that he made it to the stage wow you imagine that kid in a more controlled environment you know right. at the show five days ahead of time chris looking at him day after day yeah you know if if he can come over here like a mess like that and place top five <laughs> that's crazy you know wow oh, right yeah. off the plane that's craziness
Yeah. That, it's good. It's exciting to know there's a lot of young, fresh blood out there. And uh... that was definitely the takeaway. You're right. Between um, Nick Walker and Hunter in the open, breaking mm -hmm. that top five, um, those two, the Brazilian and the, uh, the German guy, Urs, uh, in classic, um, 212 Epler, you know, yeah. would be one of them. It, 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 that always feels good when it's just not same old, you know, the old guard, same space. Cause it was like that for a lot of time, you know, for, there was a good chunk of time where in 212, you know, before Lunsford, it was sort of the same crew yeah. open, same guys. Um, you know, it's nice to it makes the sport a lot more interesting. The, right. the only bad thing is that now most likely a lot of these guys are going to sit out the whole year. Yeah. So, so yeah. you lose a Nick Walker, you know, competing in a New York pro and shows like that. That's the unfortunate thing is I wish that these guys would, uh, would, yeah, I don't know why that happened. Um, it, people started doing that. Ronnie Coleman started doing that sitting out cause he was Mr. Olympia. Jay would sit out because he was training just to beat Ronnie. Yep. Um, but, you know, Flex Lewis started sitting out every show. It, it's not good for the sport, and I don't think it's great for the athlete. I think you have to do your craft in order to get better at it. Yep. Just sit out a whole year. But, and just uh, rant, you know, like you can only post photos from – two or three photo shoots all throughout the year. Yeah. Right. You know, like it's, there's something to be said about Nick Walker's stock went way up even before the Olympia because he competed because yeah. of the shit talking, you know, the him versus um, who's the, uh, uh, the red con ad, the boogeyman, yeah, right. Boogeyman. He started with that and that wasn't even a contest. And then yeah. you had New York pro and then the Arnold, like, had somehow Nick been qualified and just sat out the year, there wouldn't be nearly the, the fan base that he has from no. doing these shows. No. Yeah. All right. I got to wrap it up. All right. Good job, buddy. All right. Sounds good. We'll talk soon. Jose. All right. Bye. Bye.